All right, so let's have Bradley continue reading. We're picking up from, he notices something odd. Oh, no, no, we did that already. He comes right. for a moment, then writes on the next page. So start with jo Joel's voiceover. Read Joel's, Joel's voiceover. Uh, Joel's voiceover, uh, Valentine's Day, 2003. First entry in, in two years. Where, where did those years go? If you're not careful, it, it, can, get, it can get away from you. And then it's over. Then it's over, and then you're dead. I mean, then you're then and you're dead. And within a few years, who even remembers you were a year? All right. So yes. So we have more dialogue. There's nothing to mark up in dialogue. We don't mark dialogue. So go ahead. Let's come back to. Well, no. Um, Bradley, continue reading a little bit more. Um, go down to the action line. He has no other thoughts. Uh, he has no other thoughts. Does <coughs> does work on drawing or on drawing on the opposite page. He glances, he glances up, spots a female figure in the distance walking in his direction. He stands out against the gray in a fluorescent orange hood, sweatshirt. Okay, stop. So now what are we marking up? Uh, the female figure. That's right. The fluorescent hooded sweatshirt. Exactly. Now the very next line says, this is Clementine. So again, we have that this is a main character. We've read the script once. What it really should say instead of a female figure, it should say he glances up in spots, Clementine, all caps, comma, 20, comma, 28, comma. In the distance, walking his direction. So she should be identified as her character name the moment we see her. She's not a silent extra. We can easily mark her as a silent extra and move on with the scene. Then when we go to the next step, we mark that all this scene has is a silent extra in it. When we move on to cast it, we're now casting a silent extra, and when we do our call times, we call a silent extra to the set. We shoot this with a silent extra, and it's not until someone along the line goes, wait a minute, what scene is this that we're shooting? Because now we've been shooting this scene and that scene and these other scenes and this scene and that scene. And so someone goes, wait, is this, wait, is that supposed to be, I think that's supposed to be Clementine. Is that supposed, can we see the script? Yes, this is Clementine. Oh, shoot, can we get... Kate Winslet to come on set today. Well, no, we'll just have to reshoot this because she doesn't start shooting until a week from now. Her scenes don't start from a week, so we can't get, well, where is she right now? Well, she's shooting Titanic right now. Oh, God. Well, James isn't going to let her off the set to come shoot a scene where she walks up on the beach. You see how screwed up we are, all because we didn't write in correct screenplay format. This is a technical document. All we have to write is he glances up, spots, comma, Clementine in all caps, comma, 38, comma, in the distance walking his direction. Okay, because our screenwriter didn't do it, it's the AD's job to catch it. It is not acceptable that the AD can just go, oh, well, it wasn't in the screenplay, that's why I missed it. So the AD really has to comb the script. The AD has to be a meticulous person. This is why ADs read the script once, mark it up, read it again, mark it again. They double check everything. So we know this is Clementine. We know Clementine will speak. We take, underline a figure, a female figure in red. We underline this is Clementine. We draw the line between the two. Now we know that we got to call Clementine on the set this day. Now we know that we're not casting a silent role for the scene. Casting needs to know that this is actually Clementine. Even though she doesn't speak in this scene, because we've read the entire script, we know Clementine speaks. So she's underlined in red. And we're, we're circle of black, orange, hair, sweatshirt. That's wardrobe, exactly. So we circle that. Now, when you have a character who, you know, a person who's been cast as a silent role, and this happened a lot in television, happened a lot on the soap opera I worked on. So you saw that in our breakdown in television, we start including these, these production elements on that first top sheet of the breakdown. Do you guys all remember when we looked at the breakdown, we had our cast list on the top sheet, and then we had U5s? I'll yeah. pull it up again just so that we all... So that as the world turns for... Exactly. Yeah. On our As the World Turns breakdown, we saw these production notes in television. We saw the same thing in the, in the Frasier script. In the Frasier script, we started to see these production elements because television moves more quickly. So what's our silent, so where we have um, our extras, Lakeview extras, bus station extras, police extras, these are green. When we have extras that have under five lines in the television world, this is the equivalent of yellow. 
Also, people who don't have lines at all are yellow. But usually what we have happened is when we would have, it happened a lot, there was, I think I told it when we did this breakdown, that on the soap opera set, we have a guy come in, usually it was a teenager scene, so there was one young actor who kept trying to get more roles and more money, because the moment you go from being green to yellow, that's a different pay scale. So he would, he, all he was supposed to do was just be yellow or just be green, and an actor, one of the main characters would do something. And if he's just so much as interacted with them, like when we had the old man nod at Joel Barish, if he just so much as interacted and we got that and we used that shot, he got a pay increase. If he also said, what's up, to the main character, and we got that on camera and we kept it, he got another pay increase. Because now he's speaking. He's a speaking side role. But he got, just got bumped up. That's what we, we call it, bumped up. They just got bumped up. And actors are really, you know, sometimes they can be very lascivious about it. They can just, hey, yo, what's up? Cut! You're supposed to stand there and not say anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I, just, I thought I felt the moment, you know, I'm just trying to make the scene authentic. This guy was, when he would come and we'd see him on the monitor in our writer's room, we'd be like, oh, look, look. <laughs> okay, what's he going to try to do this time? He's going to totally bump into the actor. I'd be like, dude, sorry. But just so you can get a line in, just so that it can be, because in television we move quickly. So we can't always go cut, let's retake it. And it just got to the point where certain directors would be like, don't give, don't give me that guy. Make sure they go to casting and be like, make sure we don't cast that guy anymore. Because he's so annoying, you know? And some directors didn't care. They were like, ah. And the producers would tell the directors, look, you need to care. Because we can't keep paying you more money. We have a specific budget for every single episode we shoot. So the same thing here. Clementine is red because even though she's not speaking in this scene, she always is at the red pay scale now. So we want to mark her in red even in a scene where she doesn't speak because we know she's a speaking character. Okay? All right. And she is non commissioned, right? No, this is non contract. -contract. So they're not on contract. All of these guys are on contract. This is where I talk about the 13 week contract, and every 13 weeks your contract is renewed. But if you're fired before your contract is renewed, you're still paid the rest of that 13 weeks. So non-contract actors, they don't have a 13-week contract. They just come in today and they perform for you. They have no obligation. You have no obligation to bring them on tomorrow. Okay, so it's, it's Cleo, more cost effective. Clear wagon wheel room, which says W slash core. What is that? That means that this is with corridor. So the scene, the scene has a room and it has this corridor attached. That's when I talked about in television, they'll try to attach sets right. so they save money. So now that entire set can stand. And if we need to tear that entire set down, we don't have to. We can just move the corridor and keep the rest of the set standing. Yeah. All right, so now back to our Elements that we're breaking down. So let's finish reading uh, this scene. Who was reading? Let's go back oh, to Aiden. Oh, okay. We'll go back to Aiden. Um, so she's clearly in her 30s. Start there. She's in her early 30s? Yes, sorry, not clearly. Yes. He watches her for a bit. Then, as she nears, he goes back to his drawing, or at least pretends to. Once she is past, he watches her walk away. She stops and stares out into the ocean. Joel writes. Constitutionally, I'm capable of making eye contact with a woman I don't know. Guess I'd better get back with my roommate. Ought to buy her a Valentine. She loves roses, I believe. Great. Anything to mark up there? No. Right. We've marked everything. We have nothing more to mark up. What is that there? Some writers, some ADs would mark. Joel writes, they would mark rights in purple and handwrite pen to make sure a pen crossed across the set. Or pencil where he draws. Some ADs would have, earlier in the scene where it says he draws, they would have underlined draws and wrote pencil to make sure that prop made to the set. What is that tag? She's in her early 30s, that tag. What is that? I don't know. That's what it says, what it says yeah. she's in early 30s, and then it says that tag. Yeah, it's not a screenplay thing. It must be something about some slang work, but I just am not familiar. Does anyone know what that tag tag is? <laughs> it says lobotomy? No, it says it'll bother me. Oh, <laughs> that would be scary. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and go on. So um, Max, read the next scene. Exterior beach day. 
Later, Joel walks off near the beach house closed for the beach house closed for the season. He peeks cautiously in a dark window. What do we mark up here? Dark window Joel. That's correct. Now the dark window we don't have to mark up. We, we marked up dirty because we had a vehicle. Oh. Dark window we don't mark up because it's a set. This is set deck. We don't for whatever reason we don't mark up set deck. Do you want to know the deck? Yes. Um, it's an adjective. It says in parentheses of a woman having a full rounded figure. Whoa, I love it. So, yeah, new amazing. favorite word. Yeah. Is it a noun or is it's, it it's an, an adjective? adjective? So he's kind of using it like a noun. Mm -hmm. I'm super, I'm trying to make sure it's it's a German word. That's no kidding. Is. Yeah. It's yeah. It's German, but the roots of it are Yiddish. All right, doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's actually really cool, especially yeah. Kate Winslet to be cast in the role because. Her career has been one in which she's been noted as being a fuller figured woman who, um, who, who are, who's in roles of romantic leads. So I love that actually. I didn't know she was written. I didn't know Clementine had been written to be that. Um, so that's really great. And it's a new word. It's a new it's word. That's a new word. word. Yeah. Zap tape. Yes. Zap tape Does it have a pronunciation key on it? It's probably, uh, it does. If it's German, actually, I never will say it. Zap tape. If it's German, it's probably zap tape. Yes. Especially if it's Yiddish. Okay, so let's very quickly, uh, Allison, go ahead and read. Oh, no. oh, no, that's it. We're done. Because we don't know if we're seeing seven seconds. So we just marked up the first two pages of this script. Dark window is purple? No. We leave it. It's set deck. So we don't so mark we don't it. Mark it. Oh, nope. We, we marked up the dirty window on the train because it was vehicle. But we don't mark up set decoration notes. Underneath that, Joel did put in the sand with a stick. Stick it. That would have been, yeah, we would have continued. We, we won't do scene seven because we don't see the rest of scene seven. But yes, we would have underlined Joel. We would have underlined stick, Joel in red, stick in purple. All right, so now the last step that we do after we mark up our script, you'll see on the handout that's on Blackboard, it says now we're going to do the script breakdown. That is the third sheet of, that is the third page you have. Which looks, I'll go to the looks like this. So now we're going to take everything. So what we did with those first two pages of the Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind, the AD or the producer director continues to do that for the entire work. So you do that for 120 pages. If you're in the software, you're doing it for 120 pages on the computer screen. This is usually a full day's job. You begin with counting out your scenes, you then go into marking it up, and then you transfer. You might take a break after you mark up. You might, you might come in the next day, because a lot of times pre-production days are like half days. You're working for like six hours. I know, you go a half day? Yes, in film that's a half day, because when you start shooting, you'll be doing 12 hours. Yes. Well, it's a lot more once we it's, start, because we, we, when we see, when we miss it, something goes missed. I think we miss Sydney, if there's Sydney. Sydney. Yeah, Sydney. Or I did. What is it? Oh, oh, Cindy. There we go. Oh, Cindy. No, she's not there in the scene. We don't mark up dialogue, and that's exactly why. Oh. She's not in the scene. He's talking to her. We need no actor or anything brought on set that day. That's why we don't mark up dialogue. Because dialogue could go into 50 billion different, they could talk about the purple train that came through and this is none of that's on set. It just was dialogue. So that's good, I'm glad that came up so that we could actually see why we don't mark up dialogue. We leave dialogue alone. Always mark up the action line. All right, so now as we take, we are now going to transpose everything <coughs> that we just color coded onto a breakdown script. The first thing we begin is we write the date. So you have the breakdown, the breakdown sheet in front of you. You write the date. You write the production company. In most productions, they are calling the production company. They set up a temporary company that's usually the name of the film. So it might be Eternal Sunshine LLC. Or if you have your own company, then it's your own company's name. Writers oftentimes will set up a company name in their name. So it might be Kathleen Maxwell LLC. And that's just because as a, as a writer, they're going to be contracted by themselves to write. 
ADs usually don't have their own names, contract names. They usually just come in because they get they are not always paid on 1099. Writers can be paid to certain pay scale. 1099 means the taxes are taken out. You're given a lump sum. ADs fill out a W-2 and they're hired by the production company. So they have taxes taken out. So ADs tend not to develop LLCs. But as a production company, you may develop an LLC. You have Cleveland Clinic, they're gonna pay you for a corporate video. They're not gonna pull you in and hire you and put you in their HR and payroll staff. They're gonna ask you how much does it cost for them to contract you to do this. You're gonna say it's gonna cost $20,000 for me to do a corporate video. They'll go, okay, here's the contract. We need it. They need to report to the government who they paid that to. So they need a taxpayer ID number. If you're a corporation and you don't want to be taxed, you want to be able to call charges to that tax. You'll do it on a 1099. And then every time you file 1099s at the end of the year, you then say, this is how much it costs for me to get this money. So this is how much my equipment costs. This is how much my office costs. This is the lights in the office. This is the rent in the office. This is the water cooler in the office. These are, I hired, I hired an assistant to work on this project with me. This is how much I paid them. You put all that on your tax return. So that's why LLCs are created, because they're financial ways. So right now, for the sake of this class, when you guys do this for your three pages, have fun. Name your production company. You can name your production company whatever you want it. You can name it Ferguson Always Wins, LLC. Ferguson Always Wins Productions, whatever you want. That's what I got, Ferguson Productions. Excellent, very good. All right, then you're gonna put the scene number. We're going to do this for scene number one. You do this consecutively. You start with scene, you take the script, you start with scene number one, doing your breakdown sheets. The breakdown sheet is one sheet per scene. You will only be doing one sheet per scene. So the only information that you are gonna put on this sheet is the information for scene one. Allison's eyes just got big because you realize if you have 50 scenes in your screenplay or 100 scenes in your screenplay, you have 50 to 100 of these pages. This is also, remember how I said the scene number stays the same even when you, after you lock your script and you now insert a scene. So you insert a scene between scene one and scene two. This is why we want that scene number to stay the same because we've just done all this work for scene one. We have counted the page count for scene one, we have marked up our actors, we have marked up our props, and we have put it on a breakdown sheet. And we do not want someone to come tell us, oh, scene one is now scene three. And we gotta go and change the number. No, this number will stay the same. The work for this scene is the same and done. What I do is I pull a new breakdown sheet and I go, okay, scene 2A, insert scene. Now I'm gonna break down scene 2A. And I don't have to go and now take all of my 50 to 100 scenes of breakdown sheets and erase all of their numbers and change their cups. Do you see why? Once we start production, we are not doing things like changing scene numbers. But now you can see why. And now this is why film people have this kind of attitude about them where they're like, oh, no, that's not right. Like the one I was, the story I was telling you about the canary. It's written, not the yellow paper, the canary paper. Because they're like, do you know how much work I just put into doing this to get this sheet? Do you know how much work I just did? And now I have to go redo that because you wanted to add a scene that has someone sitting with their grandmother. Let's call that scene two and be organized about it. Scene 2A, it's a new scene. All I gotta do is take out a new breakdown sheet and then I'll insert this breakdown sheet between scene one and scene two. So I have scene one that I did weeks ago we have a revised script, it has 2A in it, I break down 2A, I put that right underneath one, and there's my two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the other scenes I've done. And they don't have to move or change, I don't have to go and put another six hours of work in, when now I'm on 12 hour day. So now my day just turned into a 20, um, 12, six, 20, I should have done this. No, it just turned into a 14 hour day. No, more than that, 18 hour day. So now my 12 hour day just turned into an 18 hour day. Not only do I not want to be on set for 18 hours because I got to go redo a bunch of work, but you're paying me double time, double and a half now. Once we go past 14 hours, I get a day and a half. So I get paid for two days plus half another day. And I only went six more hours over. So the budget is being drained. So this is why we have to be organized. The same thing happens on a corporate video. So you're going, well, that doesn't matter to me. I don't have to follow all these rules because all I'm going to do is do a video for a friend of mine who owns a restaurant and wants me to do a video to put on their website. No, you want to also be able to communicate to them. I have broken down this five-page script. 
scene one will always be called scene one. If we want to add another scene of your grandma saying, showing a recipe of how she has been cooking the same way for the past, you know, 80 years, and she learned this recipe from her grandmother, from her grandmother, from her grandmother, let's call that an inserted scene, and let me produce that and move forward with that while not changing what I've already done work on. This is going to help you deliver the video on time, because they are like, we want it for our launch. Our, our restaurant is going to launch on January 5th. We want our website to launch on January 1st. So we have five days of advertising to bring people into this restaurant. We want to deliver that video on time. So that's why when they say, well, now I want my grandmother, we go, okay, great. That's scene 3A. We'll insert it there. We meet her, we interview her, we script her out, and we put that all on a separate breakdown sheet. Okay? I have a question. Yes. Uh, all right, you said I all right, I have the original two um, breakdown sheet, and I want to put it in two A. So, okay, I put it in two A. Not why I don't just put those two away. Then I'm not going to use it. So would you? You're still going to use two. You're still going to use two. You just inserted a scene, so you didn't delete scene two. You just added another scene. So you just oh. Okay. Right. So that's another reason when a scene is deleted. Once we lock a script, we don't call it deleted anymore. We call it omitted. Now, that's different from your DVD. The extras, they'll go, oh, look at all the deleted scenes. In film production, they're using that term because that's a term that's common among consumers. In film production, we call it omitted. And all that happens is on the script, when we omit it, it actually gets a line. Final draft and Celtic says in two different ways. One of them just strikes through the entire scene. So all of the text on that page gets to strike through, but it still exists. Remember how I said it's the scene two is always scene two. So when people go, why are we shooting scene two? It was omitted. Oh, okay. Do we throw away that breakdown sheet? No. We keep the breakdown sheet, we just put a line through it. It was omitted. The reason that we keep it is because if our department comes and says, wait a minute, he was supposed to be wearing a rodeo tie. What am I supposed to do with this rodeo tie? No, 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 that was omitted. Oh, so I can return this and get the money back for it? Yes, you can. We want to keep track of that. If he comes and talks to us about a rodeo tie and we have uh, some 100-day shoot, and we're, we've got 50 billion other props going on, we go, what rodeo tie? What are you talking about? Why are you talking to me about a rodeo tie right now? We're able to go into the scene and go, oh, the rodeo tie from scene one that was omitted? Yeah, that scene was omitted. We always keep track of everything that's happened so we can quickly answer questions because there's gonna be so much going on. Even on a small corporate video, you will find your head in so many different things. Now there, you're not bogged down because you have a long shooting schedule. You're bogged down because you're the writer, producer, director, and AD. You're all of those positions. So when someone comes up and says, yo, Bradley, what about the radio top? You're like, what? Because you've got 50 billion things. You just got off the phone with craft services, making sure that they know they need to be here at noon. And you're also on the phone with the location for tomorrow because they just called and said they got no power because a snowstorm hit them. So you've got 50 billion things. So you want to open up your production binder and go, radio top, rodeo tie, not needed, that's omitted. And you close your production binder and move on. You've given him the answer that he needs, but you're also not stuck you know, with your mind thinking of 50 billion different things. So that's why pre-production and planning, no matter what scale you're doing, it's going to be your best friend. Even if you're just going, it's three friends of mine, we're gonna to get together and shoot this. So-and-so will leave his rodeo tie at home. He will, it's going to happen. He never shoots a film, he never thinks I gotta take a pack of stuff with me when I go. So when you direct your short film and your friend has rodeo tie, you think it's hilarious, we're included, the days before you shoot, even if it's two to three days, you go, you know what, I'm gonna come by and get that rodeo tie from you. Because you've got it on your breakdown sheet and it's a list. And you go, oh, well, I'm gonna need that for that scene. So can I come by on Wednesday and just grab that rodeo tie from you and we'll just put it together on set? And he's like, okay, yeah, sure. Dude, you don't have to do that, I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring it. Yeah, 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 just let me pick it up. And you still grab it because Murphy's Law, what can go wrong will go wrong. Your friend loves you to death, but he is not used to coming on set. He's not used to picking out his outfit and knowing three days ahead of time what he's wearing that day. So he's used to getting some, oh man, I'm supposed to be in Bradley's shoot right now. Puts his clothes on, walks out of the door. Get on set, do you have your rodeo tie for the scene? Dude, I'm so sorry, I totally forgot. So you always wanna be organized, no matter what scale of production you're on, it saves you, it saves you time. And it makes your project, because that rodeo tie was gonna be hilarious, and your web series was gonna be so funny. But now the rodeo tie is missing, and it's just not as funny as you had planned it to be. And once we go from doing this as an amateur, as an amateur, we don't care. We go, oh, well, we put the video up, put the web series up, we're fine, we're done, we're gonna go back to our job at Kroger. 
But when we go, we want that web series to make us money because we want a client to hire us to do videos for the restaurants and they see what a great web series we did. We want someone else who goes, you know what, I'm doing distribution content and I can sell this in a packet on iTunes. We want to be able to do that web series and we don't have to go to work at Kroger because the web series is our job. So when we start working like that, we want to execute our creative you know, vision and we need the production to be able to do it. We need to be organized to do it. All right, so that's scene number. Set is the location name. So set is where we see commuter train station. We write it exactly like that, commuter train station. We do not write train, we do not write station, we do not write commuter station, we don't write commuter train. This is why, again, screenplay format is a technical document. Way back when I said you want to have very specific and concise locations, they are going to be they are transitioning now into set names. You do not want to say Tri C West Campus Library TRC TLC Computer Lab. Because now you got to write all of that right here on this breakdown sheet, and it's unwieldy and it doesn't work. Interior or exterior. We look at our slug line. It says it says exterior, so we write exterior onto the breakdown sheet. Oh, we skip breakdown sheet number one. This is breakdown sheet number one. In our example of having an insert scene, so we have, we're going to the pink revision, we've had a blue revision, we're going to pink and we've got an inserted scene. That is going to be, if there are